In this lesson, we are going to be completing the creation of post process. At the moment, we have our form set up. So when the user provides these details, what we want to do is save the information to our database. The first thing we are going to do is go to our post controller and we are going to modify the store method to handle the incoming request. And remember, if you take a look at PHP Addison route list, you will see the list of routes that we have registered. And right here, you can see we have a post for post and it goes to post that store post controller right here. So we're going to be modifying the store method of the post controller. Again, we have to provide our validation rules. So instead of having the this validate method here, we are going to create a custom request object or a custom request class. So we're going to say add make request and this is going to be post slash create post request. Now let's go to our illuminate HTTP request folder and you can see we have post and create post request right here. So we are going to make sure this is true to make sure that this request is permitted. And then we are going to return some validation rules like the title should be required. And maybe we should also make the title unique for the blog. And then we are going to say the description is also required and we'll make the image required also. And the image should also be an image. Okay. Since it's not a text like the others. And then we also want the content to be required. All right. Now that we have the validation rule set, we need to go to our post controller store method and actually inject this class right here. So we're going to say create post re request and we'll get the request right there. And notice that it automatically uses it at the top for me. So I don't have to write that manually. Next here, we're going to follow a couple of steps to save the post. First, we are going to upload the image and the second thing we are going to do is create the post and finally we are going to flash a message and then we'll also redirect the user okay so the first thing we are talking about is uploading the image now one thing we haven't done in our form which is the create.blade.php right here is we haven't set the ENC type of this form to be multi-part form data. And remember, you always have to do this. If not, the multimedia in the form is not going to be submitted to the server. So right now we have a name image right here, which means that everything is good to go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my post controller and I'm going to die dump request image. And since this is the request object, we are getting image right here is going to get us whatever the image is in the in the post request. So we'll come to my browser, give this a quick refresh and then provide a title, provide a description, provide some content. And then here I'm also going to upload an image and then click on create post. And we have an error validation rule unique requires at least one parameter. And that's because if we come back to our create post request, when we say unique, we have to specify that it's unique to the post table. Okay. So now let's refresh, click on continue. And now our die dump gives us a class, an instance of the uploaded file class. Now what Lavo does is every file that is uploaded, you can see type of file right here in the request. It's uploaded to our controller as an instance of uploaded file so that we have a bunch of methods that we can actually use to upload this file and the method we are going to be using today is the store method so on this class or on this object i can call a store method that simply requires the path to where i want to store it and level is automatically going to store that file in storage for us now let me show you right here we have a storage folder designed by Lavo to automatically securely store files. So if I come right now, give this another refresh and notice that right now I'm die dumping the result of calling the store function. So if I click on continue, you can see right now it returns to us a string, which is the path to the newly stored file. And this hash right here is a uniquely generated hash by Lavo that represents the new file name of this uploaded file. So 
If we come back to the storage folder, if you check the app folder, you'd realize that we have a post folder right here. And this post folder has the newly uploaded image that we uploaded. And that's awesome. Notice the hash right here is the new name of the file. And this is exactly what we have die dumped right here, which means we can store the path to the file that was newly uploaded to the database. And whenever we need it, we're just going to load the file. But there's something we have to also talk about. By default in Lavo, files are secure, which means that if we try to display this file on the front end, Lavo is going to tell us we don't have access to display this file because the file is secure. But the reason why that is, is because if we come to our file systems.php, it's in the config folder. So if you check out config file systems.php, that's the file. This file is where we configure our file system disk or the storage disk. By default, as you can see, it uses the local driver. So the env function gets environment variables from our .env file right here, and it uses that to configure our application. But what you can see here is it's getting an environment variable called file system driver. And if that environment variable is not provided, it uses local. And in this case, the local drive is secure, which means we can't view images from the local drive. Let me show you. If we come to our .env, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to place file system driver and set it to public. Okay. So once I do that, I'm going to come to my browser, refresh again, submit that post request again, and we can see another file has been uploaded, but no difference here. But if we go back to a code editor, check out the storage app, you can see that we have the public folder now and the file or the folder is in the public folder. Okay. So you can see right now we have this hash, which we have here is now in the public folder because the default file system disk is public. Okay. So public means that we would be able to actually preview these in the browser or show it to users. Okay. So we are done with our file upload. What we are going to do is we are going to create a variable here called image. And this is going to be the result of calling the store function in the post folder. So we are going to save this hash to the database and later use it to display to the user. Next step, we are going to call the post model create and notice that it automatically imports for me at the top. Okay. So you make sure you want to use app post before you actually call the create method. So we'll pass in the title, which is request title, the description, which is request description, the content, which is request content. And finally the image, which is the path to the newly created image right here. So you can see we have image. Okay. Now we need to flash a message. So I'm just going to say session flash, and this is going to be of key success. And the message is going to be post created successfully. Then finally we redirect the user by return redirect. And we have to redirect to the route called post dot index. Okay. Now this is what we have, but what do you think is going to happen? Let's try to submit the post request again, refresh, continue. And there we have an error that says add title to fillable property to allow mass assignment on the app post model. And that's expected, right? Because remember for us to be able to use the create method like this to actually save information to our database, we need to go to our post model, which is in the app post folder and create a property called protected fillable. And in here, pass in the title description content image. And since in future, we are going to be saving the published at date, we're just going to have it also in the fillable property right there. Okay. So let's try this one more time. 
All right, so we are successfully able to create posts to our database. Thank you so much for watching this episode and let's talk about displaying those posts in the very next episode.